Okay, so this is our amplifier from our Rockola jukebox. It's a 1939. As long as we've had this jukebox since I was a kid, it has had a hum on it, and I'm sure the capacitors have never been replaced in it. So finally, it's time to take the thing out of storage and do some work on it. So here's the schematic for the amplifier. You can see we have the pickup here on the left. First comes in, there's the bass control, the volume control, and the preamplifier. This vacuum tube 76. Treble control, a couple capacitors for that. And it has a transformer going into the power amplifiers. There's a pair of 6L6G amplifiers comes out of that into the transformer that then goes into the speaker. Down here at the bottom, you can see there's the power transformer, a rectifier, an inductor, and some filtering capacitors down here. And other than that, it's not very impressive unless you look at the date, August of 1939. So let's see, this is the pickup. The one that says PU is pickup. The volume control. This is going to be the preamplifier. These two are the output amplifiers. This one is the rectifier. This is the main power transformer. This one you can't see it, but it says it's the 3297, 3297, 3297. So that's the output transformer. This one is the 3160, so this is the choke on the power supply. Here on the front, <coughs> here's the base. In the treble, external speaker, and that's the top. So let's see, the things to remember is this is our pickup, preamplifier, output to the speaker, power amplifier. Okay, so let's look underneath. <coughs> Okay, so that's broken loose. Okay, so where were we? This is the pickup. This is the volume, the preamplifier, two power amplifiers, the rectifier, and the output to the speaker. Trouble in the base. So we've got some big old filtering capacitors here, a couple of power resistors. There's a power resistor there, power resistor there, some more capa capacitors, more capacitors, and little resistors around. Capacitor on the filter. This must be the input transformer, this must be the 3055. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is we'll replace all the capacitors. I mean, these are probably the original ones from the 30s. We're going to replace the capacitors, measure the transit, measure the uh, resistors to see if their value is okay, and if so, we'll leave the resistors in. Wires, we'll look to see if there's any place that is cracked. Don't really want to mess with the wires going into the chokes and transformers. If we need to do anything, we'll just disconnect them and slide a piece of heat shrink over them. And uh, that's it. it. The wires actually aren't in too bad a shape. They just kind of string things together from one thing to the next with long leads on the components. Okay, so where to start on this thing? 
Well, I bought some caps rather than spend a bunch of time going through Allied or Mouser or somebody. Went to Just Radios, who kind of specializes in uh, components, long leads, uh, axial, so that uh, they're pretty much direct replacements. So let's see, I'm not going to take all of the leads off if they're really twisted around. You can see on some of these, they've really twisted around when they're connecting these together. They've got the wires coming in. They've wrapped the leads around, twisted them, soldered them, and those can be a bear to get off without monkeying around. And I want to make sure I don't chip any of my sockets or any insulators and don't run my or don't uh, move the wires any more than I have to. There's a bug that landed in the wrong spot. So I'm probably going to like uh, re roof in a house. This is the first time through, so I might just go over the top, snip off the old leads, and then I'll heat this up, remelt this, see if the piece is going to come out. If it comes out, great. If it doesn't, I'm just going to uh, leave it in. Okay, so let me start with this 0.02, 400 volt. You know, it's amazing with these these old uh, tube devices, what kind of voltages they were actually working with. Okay, so 0.02 microfarad. I have a, uh, a uh, film capacitor, metallized film, uh, to go into those, then electrolytic, electrolytic for the big ones. So here's my new 0.02 metallized film, 630 volt. And uh, with this one, polarity is not important, even though this one, it probably was. So the writing on this end, you can't really see it that well. It says outside foil. So that would be the negative or the ground, the shield or the, the uh, Outside foil, they would have connected to the ground, uh, you know, kind of acts as as the shield also. So this would have been the positive on this side. This is the negative on this side. But of course, with my metallized polypropylene, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's take this bear out. I'm not sure how big of a soldering iron. My soldering iron turned off. So let's see, while I've got that out, let's see, he's 30K and uh, boy, he's right on. He should be, he should be 30K exactly. Yeah. It's not bad at all. That's everybody. Boy, these resistors are in remarkable condition. Okay, well, that's good. So we're going to leave all the resistors in. Okay, for this guy, I'm not sure what to do. I think I'm going to cut... I think I'm going to leave him in just for historical purposes. I think I'm going to cut his lead and replace him with these three. What voltage was this? 450? Okay, these are 450s. Okay, so these are 8 microfarad 450. Negative down there, so the negatives are on this end. Okay. That wire isn't going to reach unless I put them like this, and then that's not going to reach unless I just. Yeah, I think it will. Okay, I'm going to cut this guy right here. Just enough so if somebody wanted to do something with it later, they could do. I don't know what they're going to do with it.
Okay, so my speaker is off getting reconed. It should be back this week. I'll pop a new power cord in this and we will see where we are then. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching this. I hope it was interesting. Okay, I will see y'all later. Thanks, bye.